Man City 2, Manchester United 1 in the FA Cup final. Congratulations, first of all, to City for completing the double. They were the better team on the day in a narrow, narrow encounter, really, which saw both teams, you know, 11 shot seats over the 90 minutes. City just a few more on target than Man United. And Ilkay Gundogan, who's probably been the man, this is what I mean by voting for player of the season two months ago. Ilkay Gundogan in the last two months has been their player of the season. The clutch moments are out of this world. A record, the earliest goal scored ever in a cup final. How's your luck, Man United, with a screamer from outside the box? Very similar at the beginning of the second half. A, a, not as good a volley, but a good strike, nevertheless, from Gundogan. A brilliant brace from him. A brilliant performance from him as an individual. Man United, look, everyone wrote us off before the game. We would have no chance in the game. We'd be battered 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, wouldn't score. And we had opportunities in the game. Obviously, we got back into it with a penalty, a handball from uh, Jack Grealish, well put away by Bruno Fernandes. But we just don't have the overall quality that Man City do. You know, we kept Harlan quiet for large parts of this game, which I think was a in, in itself for, for our centre-backs as an individual award. One real opportunity he had, and that was saved by David De Gea. But Man United's problems really stem from two people on the field, really, for me. Again, another impotent performance from Jaden Sancho. People will say, well, he was up against Carl Walker. Look what Garnacho did when he came on. I don't want to hear this nonsense that he keeps possession, he keeps the ball. No, he doesn't have the explosive power needed for the for Premier League football, although today was the FA Cup. And I think for me, David De Gea, and although he made a couple of good saves in this game, I counted, we gave the ball away, unforced errors in terms of giving the ball away from his long balls and poor passes from the back 17 times in that game. 17 times where we had the ball, we'd knocked it around where we go back to him, he goes long, we lose possession. That's against any team in the Premier League, any team, top team in Europe, that's too much. But up against this Man City team, just kicking the ball back to them 17 times, where they're not really pressing, they're not really putting you under pressure, not putting a challenge on you, is not good enough. And look, you can go long and still maintain possession because the best goalkeepers in the world can now do that. There's two massive areas that need to improve. And then there's the midfield. Then there is the midfield. Look, we had more of the ball. We created more once, once Bruno went back into the middle. Ericsson's good, but not against this level of opponent where you need more energy. We need to spend money. You need more legs and more quality on the ball. So one, you can dominate a bit more, a bit more possession. Although, look, we had less possession today than Man City by 21%. But we had the same amount of attempts on goal than him. We need more energy in the midfield in the summer. But if we do that, you know, we add better quality into this team, improve on the Jaden Sancho's, improve on the De Gea's in goal. Of course, you've got to improve on Veghorst being your go-to guy from the bench. This Man United team is going places. There, there is no doubt about it in my mind. I, I'm proud of the boys today. I'm disappointed we've lost. I know the holes in this team. And they'll, of course, be called out. But we knew those holes before the game started. I'm proud of how we didn't capitulate after conceding so early. We fought to get back into the game. We had opportunities to do it. And look, Garnacho missed a really good chance towards the end. Rashford with a shot just over. You've got McTominay, who, look, he nearly heads the ball in. But if his first touch is better. And I look at it this way. Garnacho is going to get better. Rashford with better quality around him will improve. And he really shouldn't have been on the pitch for the last 20 minutes. But he had to run around injured because there was nobody else. But when we buy better than McTominay, better than Sancho, better than Vegkos, this team will improve. It's the start of what could be a beautiful journey under Eric Ten Hag. It's not ended how we wanted it to. Not for me personally. I'm disappointed to go away the loser today. I congratulate City because, as I say, they are and were a... They're, they're a brilliant team. They could end this season becoming one of the top two greatest English sides of all time. Whether you put them first or second, it doesn't matter. They go above, It's only one team, and that's one Man United team that can go above them. They go above every Arsenal, every Chelsea, every Liverpool, every 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 team, even their own teams. They go. They become one or two in 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 this country's history. That is how good they are. We went toe to toe with them today. Many of other teams this season, whether you're Arsenal, whether you're Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, have been battered by this team. We at the beginning of the season 
were battered by this team and we fought hard today. We know where our improvements have got to come from. I'm sure we'll make them in the summer. I'm bitterly, bitterly disappointed. But um, again, like I've said before, you've seen me after losses fuming. I'm not that angry today. I don't, I don't quite know why. Maybe my Man United, uh, the Man United panel that are going to come on will say different. Some of you United fans watching may be more frustrated. I'm almost at a point where I'm over being angry at knowing Vedcourse ain't good enough, knowing McTominay's not good enough, knowing that Fred isn't good enough. Nearly all of these players are on the chopping block in the summer. So we know there's going to be improvements there. Look, we also played this game with two or three of our first team players out injured as well. Now our best centre-back out injured. Our right-sided attack out injured. I mean, he ain't that good at the moment, but our best number nine out injured as well. So look, we had, we had a few problems that didn't go our way, a few injuries that didn't go our way, but we stayed in this. We had chances at the death. But City, the deserved winners. I'm taking nothing away from them. They deserved it. I would say they were the better team. I really would. They, do you know, this is why this, this is why the City team is so good. I'll tell you why. Because we kept Harlan quiet tonight. He had one sniff. Jack Grealish. Listen, I'm so glad AWB staying. Because in games like this, listen, if there was better quality in front of him on that right-hand side today, you don't need his creativity. Your midfield and your wings should do it. What he, you know, he pocketed Jack Grealish, Bernardo Silva. You'd barely know he was in the game, as an example. KDB, I mean, he walks away with two assists. Brilliant corner. And he actually got an assist. It's an amazing stat. He got an assist for the first goal because the ball deflected off of him last. But, you know, he had a relatively quiet game as well. But this is why City is so brilliant. Because you can keep their three or four best players quiet, but they've still got Gundogan. You know, they've still got Rodri. They've still got Carl Walker. They've still got John Stones in the middle, who was amazing today. That is how good he is. And a few of you in the comments are saying, look, hold the L. Listen, again, the L's on you guys. I said, I think, we'd, I, th I, said I think we could win. And I backed my team. But a lot of you said, no chance, Man United. You're all wrong. A lot of you said battering 3 4 5 nil. Just because City win don't mean you're right. You're taking the L today. Anyone who said 4 or 5 nil and we didn't have a chance, you're the real losers today. You don't understand how football works. You got your prediction right of who would win, but not in, not in the way in which you said. So, yeah, look, I'll hold the L, but my question to you is, where's your team today? What did your team do against City this season? Where did your team finish? What did you win this year? There's only one team in England that can talk to Man United this season in terms of real banter, and that's Man City. The rest of you, you're behind us. <laughs> you're behind us. So, listen, I can take it on the chin with a big smile on my face. But I get it. It's rivals. Do your worst. Let's go to some of the super chats here. Someone here says, Sir Jim is your new owner. We will see what happens, my friend. Uh, 12 men United, you still lose. Casemiro, red card. Uh, not a red card for me, uh, for Casemiro. Um, I appreciate the super chat, my friend, but no, not a, not a red card in my personal opinion. And was it handball for the penalty? Yes. No different to Luke Shaw's a few weeks ago. There was a penalty that was given, I don't remember what game this was, a, a few weeks back. Golga, there a defender's head. He appeals because his shirt's been pulled. The ball gets headed. It hits his arm with his arms in the air for appealing. Penalty. I saw Liverpool get a penalty identical away at Bournemouth. Player jumps on the way down. He's spinning arms out to the side, conceded. So I agree with you. The rule's bad and the rule should be changed for those handballs. But by the letter of the law, it was a penalty uh, for Manchester United. Uh, all 11 players showed they don't give a F about stopping City tonight. Well done, City. You don't think those Man United players played hard? You don't think those Man United players put a shift in, Steve? I'd love to know why you believe that. Please let me know. I'm embarrassed as a United fan. Tell me what you're embarrassed about, my friend. Tell me what you're embarrassed about, because I'm embarrassed that we've spent a billion pounds in 10 years and this is our squad. I'm embarrassed at that. But I can segregate and ring fence that feeling towards the owners and Man United's failings in the past from what this team under Ten Hag is doing, because Ten Hag's not accountable for what has been spent and invested in before him. The improvements this year are palpable. We're moving in the right direction. I can take the loss, but no, we're heading in the right direction. But I'd love to get your thoughts, Ted. Uh, we never fought hard, Terry. That's cap. You don't think, uh, again, I want to know, I, I need you to explain what we didn't do that you expected more of, please, my friend. I thought we kept our shape. They had the majority of the ball, which means you've got to remain disciplined. That's hard work in 25 degree heat when you don't have the ball. That's why I thought we worked hard, but let me know. Terry United were robbed. Uh, it's a disgrace. Obviously, that's a bit tongue in cheek. Uh, first off, congrats to City, but uh, a, a United point of view, that first goal can't happen. Miscommunication from centre-backs 
And then I'm sorry, David Dyer has to stop the second. Uh, there's no pace on the shot. I, look, there wasn't a lot of pace on the shot, and I've been very critical of De Gea this year, but he doesn't see it until late. So he's reacting and he gets a hand to it, just not enough. I can understand that criticism, though. Um, and I think there'll be a lot of people going for him. But the biggest issue with De Gea today wasn't that goal. It was the 17 times we lost possession because he can't find a man with his kicks. Imagine we get 17 more opportunities to build up attacks. 17 more opportunities to build up attacks in a game. Even this Man United team, which is going to be improved upon, would create at least two or three more goal-scoring opportunities. Remember, we created as many goal-scoring opportunities today as City, but we gave the ball back to them 17 times from their goalkeeper. I counted, they gave, they gave us the ball three times like that. That's where we need to improve. Goalkeeper, it's huge. Uh, Terry, it's going to be uh, okay. Something in your life needs to scream. David De Gea out and Glazers out. I agree with you there. Uh, Terry, Arsenal fans are claiming their season was better because we lost the cup final. We finished third and won a cup. Arsenal won nothing. Clowns. Look, Arsenal fans are entitled to think that. Let them think it. This is my point of view. If you believe the season's better, their opinion to a degree is inconsequential. It's inconsequential on a personal level. I look at it this way. Arsenal had a brilliant season of progression. They've become a title challenging team. I think with the right recruitment, they go to another level next year. But I believe exactly the same thing about Man United, barring becoming title challenges. We can do that next year with the right investment. So let them think it, throw out your challenge, but just focus on your own club and know we're moving in the right direction. Um, I want Gundogan at Arsenal. I don't care. He's 33. He's a big game player, a true leader. We need that if we want to come anywhere near City. Listen, bro, Gundogan, you're right. What, what a player he is. And we spoke about this three weeks ago on the terrace, and we spoke about where he ranked in terms of Premier League legends. And it's, he's, got to, he's got to be up there. He's got, to be, he's got to be in conversation for the top 15. Midfield legends. Has to be. Has to be. Too many clutch moments from this man. And like I've said before, barring a Champions League final, when he might go on to do that. I, I mentioned Gerard before, because outside of the Man United fan base, a lot of people crown Gerard the GOAT. I don't personally, but let's use him as everybody's universal GOAT. What has he done? That Gerard, what has Gerard done that he hasn't? Man just scored a brace in an FA Cup final. He might go on to score in a Champions League final. Then he's done everything and surpassed him. And I use a, a, a Gerard as a barometer because he's most people's number one or number two. You know, he, he's done, th Skulls have done things. He's done, Lampard's done things. He, this guy's ridiculously good. It's crazy. Uh, no FA Cup patches because the Etihad sponsor. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Thank you. Uh, come on, Terry. This is how I know United won't be back. Brighton put up a fight, uh, but you're proud of United today after they got outplayed with no real threat. Come on. Again, we may have seen the game differently. We had as many shots as them. We come close on a number of occasions. We weren't as clinical as them today. That's the fundamental. If Rashford's shot goes into the top corner like Gundogan's does, it's in extra time right now. They had a good shot from... Um, they had a couple of shots saved from our goalkeeper. That was it. They had more of the ball, which we expected. And look, Brighton were good against them. Would Brighton have been that good if City was still fighting for the title? Not in my opinion. I know my team's got a long way to go. There's a lot of quality that needs, a lot of quality that needs to come in. But I'm happy with my team today, my friend. Uh, City versus Arsenal for the Community Shield. How about that? Uh, good luck, Arsenal. Uh, winning the two girls, one cup, uh, don't top Arsenal season. Uh, listen, and that's up to you, bro. That's in If you don't believe that, I'm happy for you to believe that. It, it, it honestly won't impact or affect my day. Nabil here says, congrats to City. Uh, they wanted more and they wanted it more. And our attack was just awful. Rashford and Sancho were missing. Uh, there are a few players that need to be sold. Yeah, Rashford didn't have his best of days. There's no doubt about that. The problem was for Rashford today is how many opportunities were created for him. It wasn't quite, you know, it, things didn't fall for him like you would want them to. Bruno being put out on that right-hand side, again, it was a needs-must situation. It was a needs-must situation. The mistake, though, was more starting Sancho. Sancho, again, having an invisible game. I don't care about, oh, Bruno. Someone actually sent me a stat. Oh, no, Bruno's pass completion in this game was, they sent it to me, and I was like, okay, what is it? They sent me the pass completion. They went, it was 67%. That's awful. I'm like, yeah, KDB's was 66%. What's that got to do with anything? Like, I didn't understand. Both chances, both created three goal-scoring opportunities for their team today. The difference was 
the difference was is that the chances De Bruyne created, his teammates converted. So at the end of the day, you need people creating opportunities in these games. It doesn't matter how often you're giving the ball away, in my personal opinion. It's not really that big a deal. Gundogan today gave the ball away 16 times. No one cares. He scored two, a brace. No one's going on about it. It's only one player that gets that attention, and it's become an obsession. It's weird. Uh, when we had the ball, we had zero plan. We panicked, couldn't string three passes together, gifted possession back to City easily. Pathetic performance. I understand you feel that way, but that's all to do with quality. You need better quality on the ball. You need better quality football players on the ball. And half the issue was we were having to move the ball quickly into areas where we were able to push us, uh, where they were able to suppress, they were able to suffocate the ball. That's because we can't pass out from the back. 17 times long balls given away. We've got to get away from that. We have to get away from it. It's as simple and as straightforward. It's as simple um, and as straightforward as that, as far as far as I'm concerned. You know, City played near near about 180 more passes than we did in this game, and that's got to improve. But that will improve with better players. I hear you. Glazers in, Nuff said. Yeah, you would say that. Uh, although I enjoyed United's L's, I still rather have your season than Arsenal's. Don't see why fans disrespect trophies. They don't disrespect trophies. What they do, they do but they're not trying to. Essentially, everyone plays down certain trophies as not being important, so they don't have to take the L when they lose in it. It's as simple as that, my friend. Um, I'd still rather have yours. I uh, don't see why fancy trophies might as well uh, get rid of the Carabao Cup. Yeah, I mean, I, I expect no one to be watching them next year. Uh, Terry, City have uh, lost to much worse teams this year, so please don't use your squad not good enough excuse. You had the chances to stop City and win. Listen, City haven't conceded more than one goal in their last 29 games. I think they've been unbeaten up until they lost to Brentford on the last day of the season. Again, when they had half the, their first team not in their starting lineup. They, what, was it a 15, 16, 17 game win streak? They have been beaten by better teams earlier this year, including Man United. But they've never lost a domestic cup final with Pep Guardiola. I think you're, I personally feel like you're clutching, but there we go. Uh, Gundogan first goal. Oh my days! That strike was listen. That strike was out of this world, and it was one of those horrible goals to concede when it's against your team in a cup final because you almost want to not celebrate it but go wow, but you can't because your team just conceded that early in the game. Highly disappointing, highly frustrating, very, very, very annoying indeed. But you know. There was, yeah, but the issue is that like the lint, lint, do you know what? There's a lesson in this. I don't know how many of you have played um, football. Don't let the ball bounce. We do that a little bit too often, in my opinion, Man United. We let the ball bounce a little bit too much, causes major, major problems, and we need to get we need to get away from doing that. There's no doubt. By the way, viewers, please make sure you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're subscribing to the football terrace as well. Uh, Terry, just stop. Stop what? You need to elaborate on this for me. I, I need to know what you're talking about. Uh, no excuses, Terry. Elite level sport. Yeah, no excuses have been given. Are we doing one of these things again where you just want me to say we're shit, we're crap, I want my manager sacked? It's not excuses to give the reasons why I think we lost. And I think City were the better team. I think they had better players. They were more clinical in front of goal today. They had more shots on target. They deserved to win. That's a fact. I've said all that. Are we at a point now with football analysis where that's considered an excuse? <laughs> is that what we're saying now? Is that what we're saying? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, we have another super chat here that says, if if Carabao Cup over Arsenal, how comes it's City versus Arsenal? That's just the way the leagues, that's just the way they set it up. Um, if you think that, so your opinion is that two teams are in the, uh, the Community Shield final are the two teams in the previous season that have had the best campaigns. Is that your, if that's your logic, that's your logic. You just got to maintain that logic forever. <laughs> you just got to maintain that logic forever now. Um, but fair enough, if that's what you think, my friend, fair play to you, Sam. If, if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. Um, enough, Terry, enough. What is enough? To, uh, come on. I'm going to ask you all a big question now. A big boy question for grown-ups. What do you mean? You're all just writing things, but you're not saying anything. Enough, of, uh, elaborate, write longer. Uh, Terry, talk about City. We spoke about City um, on the show already. Uh, we've been on 19 minutes now. We've probably spent about 50% of that talking about City. There's two teams in this final. The panel will come out and we'll speak about it more. Um, we almost did the impossible, Terry. Now, I don't think we were close to winning the game, personally. 
obviously 99% of most people got their predictions wrong. We were going to get battered, have no chances, not be in the game. I think that is not the case. So again, I suppose that's why rivals are a bit angry right now because, oh, we didn't get what we wanted today. We didn't get a mall in. But like, like, like City have done to a lot of other teams this year. But um, even City fans I spoke to were like, no, United, no chance, we'll batter you. Didn't happen. When we improve in the summer, we'll come for this City team. They've got Pep. They're the out-and-out favourites. But Man United are on the way up. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it in my mind. Uh, Terry, why do you think United will get their recruitment right when their track record is hit and miss? This current manager, this current re recruitment team did a very good job in the summer with the majority of our main targets. If they do a good job, we'll challenge. If they don't, my mind will change. That's it. So yeah, it's it's as simple it's simple it's as simple as that. Uh, what we saying? It actually, Terry, I predicted two nil, but you got a lucky penalty. Stop capping. Then fair enough. You were you, you were wrong. <laughs> thanks, thanks for admitting it, bro. Uh, City didn't let in a non-penalty go in the FA Cup run. Yeah, if you want to exclude penalties as being real goals again, then they, they didn't. It, look, it's been a brilliant FA Cup run. Brilliant FA Cup run from City. One of the best we've seen. That's why they're one of the greatest teams in English football history. That's why they deserve all their flowers. That's why they deserve all their praise. That's why they are getting all their praise. You don't see me slagging them off, ever. You've never seen me slag them off and say they're not brilliant, they're not great. Even when people say, are they better than your greatest teams? I say no, but I never once slag them off. Because I'm a man, and I, I just don't need, that isn't how I operate. Uh, a Kanji, uh, sorry, a, a Kanji, Walker, Diaz, Rodri, Stones, Gundogan were class today. Even when KDB and Haaland, Silva and Grealish were neutralized, we still count on the rest. That's because you're a brilliant squad, my, fr my friend, or who they are, if you're not talking about your own club. They, they're, they're out of this world. They're so, I always remember Fergie got asked the question once in after a Champions League final against Barca, why don't you man mark Messi? And he laughed and said, he just started, started he, David V. Uh, Ped, uh, Pedri, Zavi, and he started naming everybody else. He went, then they'll have more space and they'll kill you. See, you've got a team that's at that kind of point where you can nullify three or four, but it's three or four more that can come up and be match winners. And that is why it's on, on a given day away from home. They only beat one of the top nine away from home this year. You can get at teams. But when it comes to clutch moments, big games, generally the team with the best manager and with the overall deeper squad typically wins. And they come through that so regularly. They're a brilliant, brilliant side. Uh, at least we didn't get battered. Beautiful. <laughs> Listen, but that's more from a, like, I'm, I'm disappointed today and I'm annoyed, but you don't walk away with your, with, 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 with your towel between your legs embarrassed. You know, losing 2-1 to this City team in the final isn't embarrassing. It's annoying. It's frustrating. I'm disappointed, but I'm not embarrassed. So there's a, there is a, that's what I'm referring to, my friend. Uh, Man United lost to Man City and now attacking Arsenal fans. I, I mean, I can't see any of that myself. I'm not looking at all the comments. I'm personally not, but thank you, Kenny. Uh, United are miles off its recruitment, uninspiring. Glazers not leaving, no pressure, acceptance of mediocrity. I'd love to know who you support in terms of saying that, my friend. Thank you. Uh, since you rank players based on trophies, has Gundogan now overtaken Roy Keane as a player? I think Inter uh, has, uh, will beat City. Well, I hope Inter do. Again, I don't rate players purely on trophies. Again, but it is a massive, massive barometer. It's only players that don't win trophies who talk about trophies not being the main get aim and goal in their life. There's something in that. Everyone that wins them talks about them more than anything else. So yeah, like Gundogan is, is is in and around, in and around that kind of level personally. But um, Roy Keane, he's he's up there on one one of the one of the greatest of, of of all time in the Premier League. When you look. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by the way, seven Premier Leagues, four FA Cups, a Champions League, a treble. So Gundogan's not done that yet. He hasn't. He hasn't got seven Premier Leagues. City have, have only got seven. in the, Yeah, I don't think he's got seven. So no, if, if we just do it on trophies, no. But on technical ability and stuff like that, this man's amazing. Ma amazing. Arsenal fan here uh, came to your channel this year because Arsenal vids. Over the course of the year, I've become a huge fan. Uh, big up the great season for you and your channel. Uh, thank you, Phil. I appreciate that, bro. And it's been a roller coaster. And there's one more big match reaction remaining, which I'm <laughs> I'm not looking forward to um, because of what City might go on to do. But there we go. And, you know, if they do it, they absolutely deserve it. Uh, should we have a conversation of KDB versus Gundogan? No. Man, listen, Man United, uh, Man United fans have got a, 
a disease that lives within our fan base where, and I don't know where it's come from, where we play our players off against each other. At no point should City be doing KDB versus Gundogan. It should be KDB versus midfield, other midfield legends of other clubs. Gundogan versus midfield legends of other clubs. Why play your players off against themselves? <laughs> That's not how being a fan of a football club works. You, if you're going to attack anyone, you attack rivals. Why attack your own? It's a bit like I've got all my kids in front of me, all three of them. I'm like, right. Instead of going, right, what are you better at than your mates? How many of your friends have done that? None of them. Ah, you're better. Like me, why would I play them off against each other? <laughs> I might do it against their cousins, but I wouldn't do it against themselves or all my kids. It's a weird one, my bro, but no, the City fans should not be playing their players off against each other. It's, it's a weird disease. that City, City won't have it, by the way. City fan base won't have it because they're winning trophies. That's it. Man United have got it. Arsenal developed it. When you're not winning things, you, you develop these weird obsessions and they're pointless. They really, really are pointless. Look, I'm going to bring the panel out now to have their say, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, make sure you're hitting the like and the share button. Make sure you're subscribing uh, to uh, the Football Terrace as well. Uh, KJ's coming. Dizzy's coming. Staffy is going to be here as well. Let's do this right now. Uh, welcome to the show, gents. Obviously a disappointing, a very disappointing day for us. KJ, uh, give me your thoughts, bro. Um, we just, we're just not there yet. That's just the main thing we can take from this. Um, we tried our best. Um, we, we, we did what we could do with the squad that we had, the players available. And we're just not that team. Man City are an incredible team. They will go down as one of the greatest teams in English history. If not, they're already there. Um, and we're on the way back. We're trying to build back up. So I'm glad we didn't get embarrassed. That's the main thing. We, you could tell the, the players were trying, um, and they just couldn't. They just couldn't get over the over the line. And I, I can't. I can't be too vexed about that personally. Um, it's not like we lost four five nil. The the first goal. It. That, oh, that's all I can say. No, no one expecting it. Not even the players. Not even Pep himself could have planned for that to happen. That was an amazing goal from Gundogan. Um, the penalty. People will say it's not handball, but in right now in the laws of the game, it's handball. It will change next season. It is what it is. A good, good pen from Bruno. And then, yeah, the second goal. It's the second goal where I'm just looking. I'm just like, damn, guys. Like, like, how has no one rushed out there to try and get the block in? Um, people blaming the hair. You can say, could he have predicted the shot coming off earlier? I don't know. But overall, we're just not. We're just not there. Overall, we're just not there. Season's done. It's been a decent season. And now, as a United fan, I think we should just look forward to finding out who our new owner is, focus on that, and and then we go we go again in the summer. I do believe this team can improve, get the right players, get the right get the right new owner, get the right players, and moving forward, we we can eventually win more than one title in in a season. You know, um, we can potentially challenge for the Premier League in time. We just gotta get the owner situation sorted. But yeah, overall. Man United did their best. No one expected us to win. And we didn't win. <laughs> no, I, 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 hear, I hear you on that completely. And I, I, I echo a lot of what you say. Staffy, uh, how about yourself, mate? Because obviously, we knew we weren't going to dominate the ball today. We did have opportunities and chances which we couldn't convert. Conceded two brilliant goals from City's point of view, but disappointing at the timing of them in terms of the beginning of halves. Um, what did you make of it from Man United today? Listen, we said all of yesterday, we said don't concede early. And what did we do? We conceded early twice. So that was game plan out of the window in what, 13 seconds. And in the second half, it was what, 13 minutes, something like that. So game plan didn't work. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not really much to say about this game because it was very obvious. It's very obvious the team, one team is better than the other. The better team won on the day, you know. They, th they had all of the ball, which we expected. I, I refused to think that our players didn't try because I, I did see them try. I didn't really see Haaland in the game. I didn't see much of De Bruyne in the game. But yet again, if someone would have asked me yesterday, who do you fear the most? It's Gundogan. This guy always kills us. He's one of these players. Every team has that one player that likes to score against a certain team, and it's always this guy. You know, I always fear this guy because we can shut down the the obvious options, which is Haaland and De Bruyne, and you know, give him a rough time. But how do you stop that? You know, it's like there's not even like really clear chances. It's just two pure moments of class. You know, how do you how do you stop that? You know, 
Um, I would have loved to see Erickson a little bit tighter on Gundogan in that first goal. We all know this would happen if Erickson started. Yet again, I don't really blame much on the manager because we don't have options. My options would have been playing Anthony and then keeping Bruno in the middle with Casemiro and Fred. Obviously, we didn't have these options, unfortunately, with all these injuries. So very disappointing to let these goals go in that way, take nothing away from Gundogan, world-class player. Only world-class players can score like that, you know. But like you said, Terry, in the beginning, you don't let the ball bounce. Like, it's just like a simple rule, especially in the beginning of the game like that. I watched the first goal again. Erickson was nowhere near Gundogan, you know. So it's it's disappointing. Overall, the team is just not good enough. They tried, but they're not good enough. You know, everyone said we would get battered. I didn't think we would get battered. I was hopeful that we would win. Everyone knows I put my neck on the line. But, you know, it's a prediction that I got wrong. Still was going to support my team no matter what. You know, and I'm just hoping that next year we don't have to go into any more cup finals where I really feel like we just lack so much quality and stuff because, like, I don't want to see the other team bringing on Foden and whoever came on, and we have to bring on Veghorst and Scott McTominay. It's just like there's levels to it, you know, and it is what it is, you know. We'll continue to next season. Yeah, and, look, and I, I agree with you on that. And I think that it's one of those things. I know that I, we had a few comments from people say, but they've lost, they've drawn to not, Nottingham Forest this year. United have beaten them this year with those same players. We understand that, but this is a neutral ground. This isn't away from home for City. And, you know, they, they are a team full of winners. They're a team with the best manager in the world. To, to, to nullify that in these scenarios, you need better quality. And as I say, we 11 shots each in the game. They weren't peppering us opportunity-wise. Now they had moments where there was, there was the, the shot from Bernardo Silva on the right-hand side, and the Kanji's coming at the back post. Now, on paper, that's a shot off target. and doesn't count as a chance uh, for, for a Kanji, but it was close. But at the same time, we had a shot from um, Garnacho that just went wide, and a header from McTominay that just went over, and there's fine margins in this. But if you bring better quality into this team, D- Dizzy, do you see us being able to close this gap on City going into next season? I hope so. I hope so. Me personally, I'm happy that the season's over. Right now, I'm yeah, I'm I'm glad that the season's over because the gaps in United squad have been obvious for to me anyways for a while. Um I knew that when it when push comes to shove, when it comes to crunch time, which now is crunch time, we weren't gonna get across the line other than a perfect game or sheer luck. Um I see he had a lot to had a lot for us, and I think Quality wise, there's still a big gulf in class. I think even if they didn't concede, even if they didn't score the uh, the 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 Gundogan goal, I think they would have just up, up the pressure a little bit more, and I think they would have scored in a different way. Um, I think we we need a clear cut striker. Veghorst and them man there, Martial and them man just don't work, fam. They don't work. Sancho on the wing, they, they, he's too hit and miss. You see what I'm saying? The midfield, Ericsson, he's a squad player. He shouldn't have played this many games this season. Um, defense without Martinez, yeah, it's 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 sticky. So we've got a lot of holes to fill, and I'm excited for the summer. To be fair, no, even without Martinez, Victor Lindelof has stepped up. Varane he, he... has been around all this whole season. Luke Shaw, I think people have been slating Luke Shaw for today. I honestly don't see where he personally went wrong and Aaron Masako as well. I think the defence has been but, decent. Obviously, we know yeah. about David De Gea's deficiencies and we know yeah. we need cover for Varane when he gets injured and now Martinez, yeah. obviously a freak accident. But defensively, I don't think that's here's, the here's, massive concern. Here's the thing though. We played well defensively about I would say 85 minutes or so. We played as good as a team can play against C. But the problem is those miscommunications in the moments and the fine margins, that's where we lost the game today. If we could have, because think about it, 13 seconds in, if somebody was commanding the line, do not concede that first header. Somebody go and win that. Somebody go and challenge that. If we can make it to 30 minutes and it's still nil-nil, that's a different game to we're one nil down chasing the game still. The penalty that we got now, it looks, it changes the complexion of the game, if you see what I'm saying. So you can play what fine margins or what defines especially moments like this, especially when you're playing an incredible team like C, for sure. For me, anyways. Yeah, no, I get that. But uh, it, it's one of those ones where it's like, we're at the end of the season now. We, we've we locked up this game. We just went against a team that was just outright better than us. Remember, this wasn't like Newcastle beat us 2-1 uh, with those right. goals or Arsenal beat us 2-1 with those goals or someone way down the pecking order beat us. It's the, the best team in the country, best team in Europe, 
one of the best teams of all time. So what more can we do than just say, all right, we just know the areas that we need to improve. Going in on players right now, there's no point because we already know no. like where course ain't gonna be here. You know what yep. I'm saying? Martial won't see them pitch as much once we get a new mm-hmm. striker. The mid like Ericsson won't see the pitch as much once we get a new midfielder. Like all we all we gotta do now is look at the areas where we need to improve and be like, all right, cool. What players can improve us and get over, over the line? I'd be on yeah. the phone with Diogo Costa's um agent yeah, right now. I, look, I think I think yeah, no, I agree with you. I was gonna say the, the goalkeeping element in terms of closing this gap. The goalkeeper element is massive for me. I, 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 Lindelof's done well to step up, but we know we're looking at Kim Min Jae. That's because if you have Kim Min Jae, Varane, Martinez, they're your main three that are going to play and fight out for those positions. And you've got a great backup, great rotation. Where are someone like Lindelof works is thrown into the occasional game. You don't want him starting week in, week out. But the hair is, listen, of all the mistakes of everybody today, and there's loads of people that, that can be focused on, it wasn't even mistakes per se from De Gea. And I, 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 again, it's a bit of an agenda, but I sat before the game, I sat a little, I made a little chart in, in my book. And I'm like, every time De Gea kicks the ball out and attempts to find a teammate when he's not being pressed, I only do it when he's not being pressed by a defender. Mm-hmm. How often do we lose possession? 17 times in the game. Ortega at the other end, I included when he got pressed, just three times. If we had 17 more attempts at building up the play through not losing possession straight from a goal kick, I'm not saying it would make 17 more goal-scoring opportunities because that's ridiculous. I think City only averaged 17 per, per game across the whole season, but it gives you more of an opportunity. The pressure is relieved a bit more. It's such an important position for us to, to improve on, working the ball into those areas, stopping us from feeling so vulnerable. As soon as that ball goes back, there was a few times where we moved, like, had some good movement, played the ball around well, but there was no opening. And what you don't want to do, and we've been screaming at people like Bruno not to do this, is don't just try hero ball. But when you don't try hero ball, what you have to do is recycle. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. when you recycle, it has to go back to your goalkeeper. The problem is every time it goes back to De Gea, typically within one or two moves from De Gea, we lose possession. Mm-hmm. So we can't maintain possession long enough because we're not able to play out from the back. Then you have to look at players that are either better technically or have more impact on the football pitch. And we have too many, I suppose an offensive word for them would be cream pass. We have too many guys that are weak. I think on, with his feet and technical ability, Sancho and Ericsson have got it. Physicality-wise, they are not there. You saw again when Garnacho came on, that explosion of power was causing problems. And he was very unlucky not to create, you know, not to score a goal or create us one. Sancho just cannot do that on the left-hand side. I don't buy into this nonsense that he's, he's doing it to maintain possession. That's what City's fans were saying about Grealish until he started delivering. And then when he started scoring and getting assists, we're all like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what, a, 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 you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 million pound player's got to do. We already have a couple of players in our team that can deliver, that can be quite clinical for us, but they need those operators around them. Bruno and Rashford are prime examples. They need, we know how, how clinical they can be for us, but you need to create them their opens in the moment. You, know, you saw today with Haaland, you stop the ball getting to Haaland in goal scoring situations. You stop the ball getting to KDB in dangerous pockets where he can create. They're not players that run games. That isn't their job. Mm-hmm. People that run the games are the Rodri's and the Gundawans. And, and your Jack Green Stones, today was also Stones a, they run the game. So, we, and this what is where player. I get confused. Listen, Bruno, Bruno say had a quiet game. I thought Bruno, he had a few moments where he gave the ball away. But outside of that, the guy stepped up for a penalty. It was his cross for the penalty. The guy created as many, as many chances as anybody else on the pitch. Rashford, a quiet game from him again. But he's a number nine. And you, you have to watch interviews and listen. He spoke to Gary Lineker before the game about this. He's like, I keep, I've been told and coached by the manager, stop dropping deep. And this is where we as fans have got to learn to stop pushing agendas and listen to the professionals. We don't know as much as them. Your opinion should be based off what they're teaching us. And him and Gary Lineker were talking. He said, what Ten Hag's been working on with all year and what other coaches have told me his whole career is, when you're a number nine, you stop dropping deep. We don't want you running into channels and pockets to to get on the ball and influence. We need you in and around that area. So when we work on opportunity, you're there. The problem is, when you don't create the opportunities, he looks like he's had a dead game. But that's not on him, in my opinion, today. The people that should have been building up the play and getting the ball to him didn't impact the game enough. And that's where we have to improve. Because put the ball in positions for Rashford, he'll score. Put the ball into pockets of danger for for Bruno to feed balls in. We know he creates. Because he's created more chances this season than KDB, who's looked at as one of the greatest midfielders in the history of Premier League football. So we have to get a new goalie. We have to improve that midfield and defence in terms of playing out from the back, maintaining possession, because one, that's how you relieve pressure on yourself. And two, it's how you create a, a pressure cooker against your opponents. And if we don't do that in the summer, 
then we'll stay where we are. A fourth place, third place team that goes on cup runs to become title challengers and be able to go toe to toe with City. That's where we've got to improve for me, in my, in my personal mm-hmm. opinion. And add that, well, add that. We, the, 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 the striker element cannot be understated. The fact that you can nullify a whole attack without a striker is, is, is why teams can press us so high. When, 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 when you have a team like City where you have Haaland, no matter what you do, you can't just leave him. So, so when it comes, so there's there's a limited amount of space that could be created. Whereas for us, when you bring on Veghorst, you know that there's not really much my man can really do. So we can, <laughs> relax, we can relax a little bit. We can move everybody up a little bit further. Or we can start pressing different man, or we could double up Rashford. We could double up Sancho. It's yeah, it's tough, man. I'm looking forward to the summer. I need to see who we I, bring. I want I want to ask Staffy a question. It's slightly loaded, but in terms of Sancho. End of the road for him? No. I still see one more year for him to prove himself. I wanted to give him a second year under Den Hag anyways. Um, was he good today? No. I'm not going to come here and make excuses for him. But I didn't expect him to play good today. If, if, if I told – if he would have checked the chat, I think earlier in the week I was telling them, I was asking him, would you start Anthony or, or Sancho? And I personally went for Anthony because I wanted the work rate. And I knew it would be more in the transition, and I would rather him, Anthony, because he, it, although he's not a transition player, but he's better on the transition than Sancho. And you saw today, Sancho couldn't really get in the game. He doesn't get into these games where you don't have the ball. And he had a couple chances where he could have had like a half shot. There was one in the end of the first half and one it went right in the beginning of the second half. And both of them, I felt like he was taking too long trying to find like a clear shot. That he's not, he was never going to be that open. Like City were pressing him too much. Like all these guys coming out, I'm like, just take a shot, get something. You might get a corner out of it, or you might hit the target. Just try. And you know, those are the only, probably the only two moments that I've seen from him. You know, but this is why every game like this, you see people like him and Erickson who are really like, you know, known for being good on the ball and good passers and keeping the ball well. They're always our weak, the biggest weakness because we don't keep enough uh, of the ball in these games. You know, so I'm not shocked that this happened today and this is not the game for me to say Sancho in or Sancho out. Can I ask you a question? Why didn't you expect an 85 million pound player to deliver? Unfortunately, because that's not his profile. I'm not, as I said, I'm not making excuses for him. Hang on, sorry. sorry, I've got to interject. What do you mean it's not his profile to deliver? No, not not to deliver. I'm talking about today's game. Yeah, I would love for him to deliver. I expect him to deliver. But as I keep saying to everyone, you don't put a bag of money on the pitch to play. So if he's 85 million or if he's 30 million, that doesn't change how I look at him as a player. Do I expect more from him? Yes, but I expect more from a lot of players. There's like Anthony and them throughout the season. I was expecting more from them and I still want more for them next year. So we can sit here and talk about his price tag from two years ago all you want, but that's not going to change what happened today. And it doesn't change that. That was my expectations for today. Anyone else who doesn't like what you saw today you can go ahead and say Sancho out. I wouldn't be opposed to if he leaves and we get someone better. But as it is right now, I'm not surprised. I want to give him one more year to see what this manager can do with him. Just like he's yeah. improved a lot of players and he hopefully will improve a lot more players next season. So we'll I, see. I, I hear you on that. We have some super chats I want to go to here. Um, this is from Safe, who says, Sack Ten Hag, no tactical management. We finished uh, third, uh, one cup. Sack Ten Hag being in Qatar, F the Glazers. I do not want Sir Jim. Send the link, mate. We will share the link in, in a moment. Yeah. Um, if you want to come on and say why we should sack Ten Hag, I'm very, very entitled to hear that. Are United fans partially to pl- blame due to agendas? What? Uh, what, agenda? all, for what for the loss? Yeah, yeah. You need to, Alex, when you ask these questions, you need to specify and blame for what. Uh, if, if you're referring to what I was talking about earlier, those weird, like setting, like kind of playing your own players off against each other. Yeah, that's mental illness. It's, it, people are mentally ill that do that. I, I legitimately mean that. I don't know. I th- and when I say mentally ill, it's like they're, they're desperate for attention. That's all it can be uh, when you play your own players off against each other. Uh, time for De Gea to learn uh, Chinese because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's what Van's saying there. Uh, this from the bill that says Financial Times, six Glazer siblings to retain my United States under. I'm a little bit shocked by this news. is triggering everybody. We've known for a month that one of the proposals that Sir Jim put in would mean the Glazers remain. Yet suddenly, everyone's like getting angry about it. And what day of the week was this released again? On a Friday. But by, by every two, every every other week on a Friday, this kind of news is released. Let's wait for the dust to settle. Um, 
yeah, we'll talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it this morning because it's the FA Cup final day. But yeah, we'll touch on it another day. Thank you, Nabil. Uh, notice no mention of Bruno and Rashford. This fan base, I swear, both of them must have nudes on all these people. Rashford didn't even want to tackle. You do I talk realize... about I talk about Bruno every week. What am I going to say this week? He didn't play that bad today. Do you, do you want me to have an agenda? Uh, I I don't know. Okay, so what did what did United fans expect to happen today? Let, let, let's be real. Did we expect champagne pep football from this Man United team? Did Bro. we expect prime Jose Mourinho low block perfect counter attacking football? No, we didn't. We all knew that this team weren't going to be perfect. So this is what I'm saying. Why? What, what if Rash, okay Rashford didn't play the greatest game because he wasn't he was making runs and no one found him. That's his fault. Okay, cool. Bruno, he was trying to do things. That's his fault. Cool. What what more, people? He wasn't what even as wasteful as he usually is. Like, like what, I don't even rate Bruno expected? like that. I'm seeing Man United fans shouting, raving, crying, throwing their toys out the pram for a result that they even said they weren't expecting a loss. They were a win, sorry. They're expecting to lose. And I saw some people say we'll be down by 3 0, 4 0, 4 goals, 5 goals in this game. But now everyone's screaming and shouting that these everyone after the first goal it was like, see, we told you you'd get battered. And they you just jumped like, on that right away and we lost two one. What do you want us to do? Guys, we're just on, saying what it more, is. Yeah, more, it's, we're it's, not good enough. That, that, that's it. Like, yeah, we're not at that level. It's one and look, we, we we all know what Bruno's flaws are, but like I was saying, look at KDB today. Look at KDB. So if two of Bruno's passes to his teammates, they've scored from those shots that he created, would he have had a better game? Yes, because there's, there's some outputs there. You know, the man also stepped up and scored a high pressure penalty in an FA Cup final in front of the away, like away end from his point of view, in front of the City fans. And that's not enough. Rashford didn't have a great game today, there's no doubt. But the last 20 minutes as well, why weren't he running? That, did you see him touch his groin? He, he was injured. That's, he looked injured. He, this is all going to come out in the summer. I've spoken to journalists about this. He injured that against City the first game and took an injection at half time. That's the injury he's been carrying since January. But again, he's taking injections and playing. Because there's no one else. The man is putting his body on the line for this club because there's no body else. Martial has been injured the whole time. Vegkos fully fit. Vegkos with four legs ain't as good as Rashford with one. Like this is, <laughs> this is what I say as well to people. I want to be in a world where if Rashford's out for three months, it's annoying, but not the end of the world. So mm -hmm. let's stop focusing on the players, by the way, again, who for the majority of this season have delivered. Majority, and, and focus on the play again. I'm focusing on players who either passed their best or have never been good enough for us. Never been good enough for us. It's, cr it's, it's crazy to me how, you know, I see Rashford get more crap than Sancho. I don't want Sancho being abused. He should never be abused. But it was another performance where he didn't turn up today in, in any way, shape or form. Now, you can criticize Rashford, but the man scored in the last final we were in and scored 30 goals this season. You're never the legendary villain. I respect you. You're a long time viewer. But he's never going to get the criticism a man who barely delivers gets when he delivers on a regular basis. Like if KDB has a bad Champions League final, City fans won't turn on him because he delivers most of the time. In fact, most of their players deliver. It's probably a bad example, really. You know, Arsenal, do they turn on Saka and Odegaard as much as they turn on, you know, maybe like a, you know, like a Rob Holding or a, or, 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 or a Xhaka who typically over the course of time haven't delivered as much. It's, it's the way it works. Uh, it should be three. Uh, that the defense was disgusting. At least it wasn't seven nil improvement. I would love what someone to explain to me how was the defense disgusting. What because they saying? That four, the, the 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 four in the back and Casemiro literally did what they could. Yeah, and I, I, I don't ask, see. I want to ask Nobbins. Nobbins a City fan. Like we are going to talk City on this show, but. Did you feel like Man United's back line was awful? C congratulations, by the way, on, on lifting the trophy, mate. Congratulations to you. Uh, just to the super chat, was, was Man United's defence awful today? No. So, first of all, I'd like just like to preface all of this by saying, you know, I've just come from a watch along where we did a drinking game, so stuff I say maybe. <laughs> I am with his wave, you know. <laughs> I apologize if I come across tipsy. That's because I am. Um, no, but genuinely, I, I, I apologize if I'm crossing... Uh, uh, covered ground but i was really impressed with man united um i thought they were actually quite good um i thought it was going to be a battering uh and real and we can talk about the controversy with the penalty whatever blah, blah, blah. But I, I genuinely thought the united were actually really really good today um and it surprised me at how good they were um i don't uh, i think terry just asked me whether united's backline was poor um 
I, I would disagree with that in the strongest terms. I thought United were very competent, to be fair. As I say, aside from, if you think about what City created, what did we genuinely create? Two fantastic, two fantastic finishes by Gundogan. But if you think about like what's actually clear cut, what did we actually create? Exactly. Um, well, Haaland shot that David De Gea saved. Exactly. And yeah. and rebound. That was it. Exactly. That was the I, only one. Yeah. Exactly. I think Haaland had that um, opportunity in the first half where. Half chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the ball came in and he slid in and De Gea saved it. And then there was the other one where Gundogan put it in the back of the net, but it was offside from the from the preceding uh, uh, Gundo, uh from the preceding Haaland shot. But apart from that, genuinely, if you had to look at it in terms of clear cut chances, City actually didn't uh, create that much now they didn't no, you could say they didn't need to because they scored two world-class goals but I, I yeah I, I genuinely i thought united played quite well and that surprised me um i thought united were going to be borderline sorry if it sounds like i'm insulting them i, I thought they were going to be not rubbish but i thought they were going to be eh, or whatever but you know um yeah I, I i disagree with people who say that united were poor defensive i thought they're actually quite competent that's one thing that's been a common theme for us, though. A lot, when you take away, like, if you realistic, take away the, the the Liverpool game and the City game in the beginning of the season where we got battered, we have had so many games where we played against good teams. And even when we don't have much of the ball, we, we're still structured well. Like, that's one thing Ten Hag has, been, has done for us off the ball. The issue is, as we mentioned earlier, when we get the chance to get the ball, what do we do with it? Like, the, the, I don't want to dwell too much on, on the goalkeeper situation. But, like, when you really look at it again, just go watch some of the highlights, watch the game again. You'll see that Pep didn't even try to press the goalkeeper, which is very smart because he knows this goalkeeper is not very good at passing. So what he did is he just put man-to-man -man everyone on the options that he has to pass to, which let De Gea not pass too much to his defense because De Gea doesn't trust himself and had to kick it long. Yeah. And they had the, the taller defenders to win the, um, the those long balls on Rashford and them. Now, in another situation where you have a, 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 um, a ball-playing goalkeeper, not only is he going to maybe ping some of these passes a little bit better, you're going to know, like someone like Pep is going to know, like, listen, this guy can actually pass, so I don't want to give him the freedom to pick all these passes, so maybe I'm going to press him a little bit. Then when you have a Haaland or a De Bruyne pressing him, that leaves one more option open, so now he gets to make a pass. These are yeah. all like tactical things that I'm talking about. Is if we had that type of goalkeeper, and, and this is the thing: there's a structure at Man United, but the players that sit in the structure, in terms of their technical ability, are not that great. In terms of you, mm. you put a better goalie, another another centre back, you put another midfielder in, just just three or four more players who are highly competent in terms of ball possession. Man United will transform very very quickly indeed because the structure is there. Um. Neeks is here with us. Neeks, what are you saying, bro? Um, it's just disappointing, isn't it? Like, disappointing because it's a final. And yeah, we didn't get battered and, and all of that. But when all is said and done, the only thing that matters is winning the final. We didn't win the final. And it's not that I'm going to lambast the players, but that's, that's just not what I do. It's not my style. I felt that we, we had a chance of winning this final going into the game. I didn't write it off like, like a lot of people, whether they're fans or rivals, whatever. I don't think any final is a foregone conclusion because you have to go out and win it. The disappointing thing, and this is not to say City weren't the better team because they were, but as, you know, Nob has kind of alluded to, like, we didn't generally defend poorly, but City, they didn't have to work enough, hard enough for their goals. If City cut you apart, they get up, ball down the channel, cut it back, and they score those typical City goals, you say, you know what, well done. Fair play, fair technical players, cut you apart, and, and they score, you say... But to concede in the, the two goals in the way that we did is, is the disappointing part. Because, again, if City play their best, yeah, they're going to beat us. But we didn't make them have to play their best. That's the problem. We didn't, and, and you never know in the final, maybe they, they, they would never have played their best if we forced them into that situation. But the problem is, when you concede in, in 13 seconds, and then you concede less than 10 minutes after half time, you're in a position where they never had to, they were never forced to play at their optimum. And, mm -hmm. and that's the disappointing thing for me because because by the end of the game, we we're still in it and we still had a few chances and opportunities to score. But I don't know, I think we just lack going forward. Defensively, I didn't have a problem. Of course, there's issues with, with, the, with the keeper and um, the midfield, specifically Ericsson, I'd say. 
But going yeah. forward, it was just that the ability, the, the lack of the ability for maybe the ball to stick with a striker, Marshall not being there, um, and that final ball or that final shot just wasn't there. So it just it's just disappointing, man. Uh, they're yeah. on the brink of a treble, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. there's not there's nothing we can do about it now. Mate, absolutely. I echo what you're saying. I think, as you, as you mentioned, it's the. Of course, I'm glad we didn't get battered, but I am just disappointed that we didn't win. Didn't win the game, and yeah, I, I echo a lot of a lot of what you just said there. Welcome, uh, Gals, joined us as well. We have a super chat here from the Bill that says what Terry said about the strike uh, a striker not getting service. Yeah, 100. percent I agree. It's true. Uh, Sancho getting one more season. Listen, if we if we could find a, a buyer for the right amount of money, I would sell Sancho this summer because. Unless the guy, I could fix Sancho this summer. Come with me and my boys to the gym. You might have to take a few things from a couple of the dodgy guys at the back of the gym, but a man need the man needs to get on, needs to get on the juice. The man needs muscle. He is mm-hmm. too small, and he's not athletic yep. enough. And that's not a dig. Technically, he's got it. He just isn't. I was looking at him today up against those City's players. Look at City's players. Even the little ones. They're muscular. They're, 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 they've got some. Strength. Look at Saka. Saka's tiny. Look how much strength he's got. Sancho ain't got that. Uh, these statements don't match what you guys said about Ronaldo pre-January. What's that? Got? I, don't, I, I have no idea what, why you're bringing up a Ronaldo, Ronaldo for, my friend. Uh, just way. heard, though, through the great fine gold bridge, you've given to hire a golden shower to cheer him up. Jesus Christ. Fair, <laughs> fair dues. Um, I'm sorry, KJ, if you have a weak mentality. I want United to win every damn game. I do not. I am not the person to pray United not to get battered like you, so weak. Nimbil, okay, so here's the thing. So <laughs> when I am positive after a loss, you say I'm weak mentality. But when I'm negative after a loss, you say that I am, I am a weak mentality because I'm not backing my team. This is, <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, what, what is it, Nabil? Like, what is I it, bro? Like, I don't and you've got to remember, the only, reason, the only reason the battering talk's coming up is because 72% it? of the viewers voted in our poll. By the way, 17,000 people voted on it. That we wouldn't just, there was options. It was beat narrowly or battered. Yeah. 72% said City will batter you. So, of course, United fans are going to say, I'm glad we didn't get battered. It was a talking point on shows more than anything else. It was brought up by by, by a lot of people. And also, Nabil, mm. I wanted to win today. I said I was, like, I, I've not sit here praised it, like, praised the fact mm. that we're drawing and praising all this. I'm upset. We lost a flipping final. But again, the end of the season's here. We've got new owners coming in. I'm not going to sit here, start I hope so. shouting, screaming <laughs> about the game when, bruv, we can we can have a new team next season. I, I you, you, know, you, know the thing, you know the thing for me that this final probably most showed is just the areas where we need to strengthen it. Like, yes. it properly yes. highlighted the individual position. And again, it's not to blame one person or blame the other because there's multiple holes. But it's like, we need a keeper. We need yep. a striker. We need yep. at least at least one, if not two midfielders. Yeah, Loki, we need Mason Mount, innit? <laughs> well, listen, bring him yeah, in. I thought about I it at halftime. I was like, he would have been running. <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, if we had him over Ericsson, he low-key would be running in that second half. I'm like, listen, yo, stop listen, him. Maybe he needs to revisit this. Bring me Neymar. Bring me Neymar. Can Neymar create something, innit? I hear it. I hear it. But this is the thing with Mason Mount, though. Again, if he's their only midfield signing, I'm annoyed. But not because it's Mount, because we've done more. If you're bringing Mason Mount on, it you know as a replacement, it's better than what we're bringing on. Better this is the Dominic. thing. It's about, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. And there's that energy factor as well. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad United didn't get destroyed, but you can't let that 13 second goal in. Look, listen, we all Man United fans know how Jose Aldo feels now. It's as simple as that. Uh, although it was 12 seconds to be fair, hence the the brand proper 12. Uh, why is nobody talking about Ericsson? He was bad. We have mentioned him on the show, bro. Maybe you're new to it. I mentioned him in the opening sort of 25 minutes. Uh, he is a squad player, and I think he is great against those bottom teams. I think he's great coming on from the bench. I actually think if we buy the midfielders we need this summer, we should use him what, what we initially bought him for as backup to Bruno Fernandes in those attacking areas, trying him at, at his age with a lack of pace and energy, uh, not energy, but pace and, and speed. And strength to try and dominate midfield against Rodri's and Stones it ain't happening. So yeah, look, you're absolutely right, but it's it, look, he was never meant to be the guy. But the, 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 the big difference between the, the big difference between the two, they left Mares and Alvarez on the bench. If I'm correct, I kind of yeah. I don't think they came on. Our only option off the bench, realistically, was Ganacho. That's the difference between the two sides. Like we literally had one option, an 18 year old off the bench. It should be at the 20. The, the under-20s um, World Cup. 
and they've got they've got two quality quality one is a World Cup winner, I think one's an African Nations Cup winner on the bench. Didn't need him. Didn't bring them yeah. on. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, hundred, hundred, hundred and ten percent. You're, you're spot on there. And again, that's just congratulations to City on their squad building and what they've done and what they've created. That's not a dig. It's what we all aspire uh, to have on our bench. And the thing we've gone at to is I wanted to mention him because you could argue is attacking wise he was our best player in the game and he played for twenty five minutes. This is why I said the other day I I want my wingers running at their man. I don't care if you lose it three times on the fourth time you might score a goal. That is what attacking players do. That's the Man United way. That's the way all top attackers are. I mean, like Vinicius doesn't go, right, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to try and beat anyone. I'm just going to maintain possession and pass back to my fullback. No, man runs at, his, runs at fullbacks. This guy was cooking Carl Walker, who's, who this week was voted by people online as the greatest right back in Premier League history. And he was cooking him. So listen, he's got a great future like the young lad and he deserves a little shout out for his cameo appearance. Uh, Igao is here. What are you saying, mate? Uh, hey, you know what? It was a good game of football. I think it was better than last year. Last year was, what was it, nil-nil for like the whole game and then it went to penalties. At least we got to see some goals. Um, when it comes to Manchester City, they were playing in first gear. It wasn't a thing where you guys were subduing them. They weren't really going and going too hard at you guys. They were kind of like, after Casemiro uh, left one on 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 Akanji, it, it kind of seemed like a lot of them didn't want to get injured for the cup final because that's really and truly what they're focused on for the rest of the season, uh, what they're really focused on. Um, the penalty, I didn't think it was a penalty. I really did think it was... It was it, you could you on another day they wouldn't have given that i genuinely do believe that casemiro could have could have potentially got sent off early luckily that didn't happen and fred you know what i don't think it was a penalty but people were talking about that moment i don't think that was a penalty but there were some controversial refereeing decisions in this game the hey cost you guys another game just just, just to interject because i don't want to lose you but do you think casemiro should have seen a red card yes explain he why on his foot he fully stopped on his foot do you have the image did, wait, did, wait, 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 did wait, you wait, see wait, the wait, clip, wait. Gal? Don't, don't look at the image. Did you see the clip? I see the clip. I'll tell you what he was trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so Gal, he, when... he was trying to put his Listen. foot in front of the ball. Let, let me ask you guys this. Let me ask you guys this. No, I need to ask you a question. It's early in the game. I understand they don't give it early in the game. If that happened later in the game, they would have given it. Listen to the question. Listen to the question. When has stomping on feet become red card offenses? When it happened to Abamia against Crystal Palace. When you look at the name on the shirt and it says Casemiro, that's what Listen, listen, listen. Just because it happened to Aubameyang, does that now think that every stamping on foot is a red card for you? Is that is that what you're saying? Oh, that's part of my thing. There's a lot of refereeing decisions that went wrong. You know what? Some of you guys might disagree. That's not nonsense. That's I genuinely do think it was. It wasn't only his foot. It was the the placement of where he stomped. You could easily have confused it with his ankle. So next, you know, so next, we got that free kick, right? So next, like it was a foul so next, for us. Okay, so next season, Igal, anytime an Arsenal player catches an ankle or a foot when they're late, you're going to call for a red card on your own player? No, I wouldn't call for a red card on my own player, but I would look back and say, you know what? We got lucky there. And I would expect you, you guys to say the same. You'll, you'll say, but you'll, but you'll no, say on match. Nobody, but say, nobody, nobody's going to say, Terry. But you'll, but you'll Terry. Say, let, me, let me finish my question. Please stop interrupting me, Igal. It's my show. Let me just ask questions. That's what you're here for, to answer them. Would you... Not call for him to be sent up, but would you say it was a red card? You're going to do that next season? Yeah, I always say when we get lucky. Hmm. I want to ask a question to... Hang on a minute. We're going to go through things you've said again. You said a lot of things. I like to unpack them. Let's just slow down. Let's marinate. Oh, no. I know you're not done. We'll, you'll, keep, you'll keep getting to it. If you say 20 things in like five minutes, it's hard to unpack them. So let's unpack them and move on to the next thing. Nobbins, do you agree with what Igal said that it wasn't United stopping City. It was yourselves not trying to beat us by more goals. I didn't no, say that. I said they were um, first gear. Well, no, that, yeah, I, first, first gear means not trying to score more goals and go for it. Yes, Egal. I think that's... I think I think I said it before. I think that's underselling what United did in this game. Um, just let me touch on the Casemiro challenge, first of all. I thought that was a yellow plus. Not a red. No chance. Yellow cards, fine. I think I think that was I think that tackle was actually given as a foul for United. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, even a foul against us. He was trying to protect not... the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he put his foot ball. before him. Yeah, then, no, 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 no chance of that red card for me. Um, I'm I'm so sorry, Terry. I've forgotten what question you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been drinking. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm this is incredibly unprofessional. I, no, no, I apologize not. sincerely. What did you ask me? Bro, you've been drinking. It's it's important from my point of view. 
like, I want to get your take on it. Gal yeah, said yeah. at the start that you guys were just in first gear. It wasn't yeah, about yeah. Man United oh, stopping you. Got it. it. Was, yeah, yeah, it got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to yeah, totally disagree with that from from Egal. Respect your opinion, but I, I totally disagree. I I, th I genuinely thought that you. Know, I'm not just saying that. I genuinely thought United actually played really well. Um, I, I don't think this is a case of you know City were just um playing on. Yeah, you know, playing in like first gear and just chilling out and just being like, oh, you know, we've got a big, bigger game coming up. Let's just vibe with it. No, nah, definitely not. I think that um, I think that United were credit for their performance. I think they were credit for only losing by one goal. And let's be let's be frank, they only lost because of two world class finishes. To be fair, um, so I I, I don't personally agree that uh, City weren't you know properly trying hard. I think that City were trying the best they could. I think the United's defense was organized. I think their midfield was organized. Um, the question mark was always going to be whether they could counterattack effectively or not. And for the most yeah. part, they weren't able to. They kept uh, losing the ball in the midfield. So yeah, for me personally, um, it wasn't a case of City not being able to get out of first gear. It was a case of actually genuinely... United were quite good at nullifying uh, City's forward play. Obviously, City played better on the day, don't get me wrong, but United played much better than I thought they would. Um, and I think that a lot of that was down to um, United's proactivity as opposed to United's reactivity. I think when you limit a team to so many shots from outside the target, you can't just say they were in first gear. Like you gotta give the defense credit. You gotta give the structure a little bit more credit, because as as not been said, we really like we the way we impacted two world class goals, and then there was that one shot from Haaland that led to the gun the gun offside goal. These were really like the highlights. Everything else again was very limited from like outside shots and stuff like that. And just because we lost, people are not gonna give credit to like Varen and Lindelof for doing an excellent job on Haaland today, because I think they kept him quiet as much as they can. Unfortunately for us, they have more options than just Haaland, which is it's a sentiment to how great their team is. Yeah. You know, but on another day, let's say we win this game, you would come out and say, like, wow, they kept Haaland quiet, respect for what the defense did. But just because we lost the game with two world class goals, as we said, people just want to ignore that we actually limited them to, to their chances. That that's it's really what it is. They didn't play their their scintillating football. They played good enough, don't get me wrong, but they didn't do like what they did to Madrid as an example. You know, so we can't just like say they were just in first gear. No, we we gave we gave them a game. Yeah, I, I'll go back to the gal now because again, I, I, what I'm saying is, like, sometimes when I interrupt you, I've sent a private note. We're trying to create. I'll be. I never normally say these things publicly, but I will. I'm trying to create content. So let me stop you. Present your question to the audience and create great dialogue. I'm not challenging you personally. It's just I'm not going to let you sit there and speak for eight minutes when you're making really good points, and I want to unpack certain things and go into it in more detail. That's all I do. So when I interrupt you, please take it from a point of view. Ah, good point. Let's unpack it and let's ask some questions on it. That's all I'm doing. But continue oh, what you're I saying. Um, I hear a lot about Sancho, but I feel like De Gea cost you guys a game. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like De Gea, the second goal specifically, I would look at him and I'll be like, you know what? You could have done a lot better there. One, he was slow to get over. Two, Terry, you already pointed out that the ball bounced and you can also blame your defenders. But I felt like that second goal, any uh, another goalkeeper on another day could easily have stopped that. De Gea, though, he was very slow to get over to the, to the side. Maybe he couldn't see, but I really do believe this is another game where your goalkeeper has cost you guys. And we spoke, you guys have spoken about this in the past, and probably all of you guys want to move on from De Gea. And this is just another example where you shouldn't, he shouldn't be starting for you guys next season. I don't no, think we no. lost because of I, one person. I think, though, I, think, I, I think we, I think we would agree, agree that I wouldn't say we that the save. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. I think it's a fair point. My issue is more inability to play it from the back, the loss of possession that happens because of that. Mm. That's what I would say was more on the highest. Like if I'm looking at if I'm looking at three players today, where if I think they were better, the game could be different. If we've got, let's just, if, if Harry Kane's starting for us instead of Sancho, obviously not the same positions, but you're moving them around. Mm. If we've got a De Jong in the middle instead of or a Rice in the middle instead Caicedo. of in, or Caicedo instead of Ericsson, and if we've got Costa in goal instead of De Gea. I think it's a different game today. Mm -hmm. Just those three additions give us so much more chance. I think you're right about the goalkeeper being an issue. I think we're looking at different issues within that goalkeeper, but I think you're absolutely right in terms of in terms of that area. It's a it, it's a problem in, in terms of the, the. It hasn't really been discussed much on the show because it's both inconsequential in terms of the result. But the red card, sorry, red card, the, the penalty that happened. 
Is it Bro. is it another one of those things where we all agree it's a stupid rule, but because yes. it's the rules, it's a penalty? Yes, yeah. yes, no. yes. No. No. no, 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 no. It was, it was. Here's the, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was I was watching. I don't, I don't know what channel it was on. But the, the, the commentators were up in arms. This is the worst decision ever made in the human history of football. Um, this Flipping is genius. This is, I was like, bro, I have seen these given against United. I've seen these given against uh, City. I've seen these given against Arsenal. This is not outlandish. Yes, it, w- w- is, it, is, it, is, it, is it weak? Is it flimsy? Yes, it is. Should it have been given? I would argue probably not. But by the letter of the law, if your arm is in an unnatural position outside of the silhouette of your nat- of your body or whatever the, the the technical term is, you have to give the penalty. So if you, you yeah. can be mad, you could be mad at the rule, or you could be mad at the officiating. But realistically, there, there, there was a there was a Newcastle game a few weeks ago I watched, and the, <laughs> it made me laugh when I saw it. The ball went over the defender's head, and he felt he got pushed in the back. So as he's getting pushed in the back, he shouts pet like foul and throws his arms up in protest. The attacker behind him heads the ball and it hits his arm <laughs> and they gave a penalty. And you're like, but it is a natural position because when you appeal, you put yeah. your arms in the air, right? But it was like that. You saw the one uh, Liverpool got against Bournemouth. I, I, look, I thought it was one of those ones. When I saw it and they were taking so long to check it, I was like, it's a pen. It's one of those, the rules got to go. They've got to mm-hmm. make it like the handball in the build-up. To, well, you've even got to make all handballs handballs or if it's accidental, it's accidental. Do you know what I mean? Back in the day, handballs were like you'd move your hand to stop goals. They've got to go back to that for me because this new rule is is is, is crazy. Someone yeah, what happened to proximity? Here's a not saying, but Prince, but Prince, I'm giving you examples and variations. As Man United considered the penalty this year that, that deflected off of Lissandro Martinez's leg and up onto his arm after a brilliant tackle, which was tucked, by the way. His arm was tucked, tucked in like this. So we've seen mad ones given. There's so many crazy ones like that. That's why I'm saying. We're all saying no penalty, but if Man United conceded that penalty, you'd all be laughing. So you'd be going, rules are the rules. So yeah, rules you're, are the rules. You're not really shaking penalty, his head. So going if to get that's out? a penalty, then Josie was right to be mad at Anthony Taylor. Yeah, I, but it's, can't... It's, it's, that's different, Egal. This one, okay, I don't agree with it, but the whole idea it's, of it's your, your arms the being... It, so it's not the proximity. When they say your arms have to be in that shape. So the one against Rome, the Roma... His his arms are like this, okay. He was moving it away, but they're saying his his arms are in his silhouette, so that's why they didn't give it. Bro, Jack Grealis, I get it. He wasn't even looking. He turns around, but he's going like this. The fact that your arm is up here and the other one was down there is the dif- is is the difference between one being given and not. Now, I'm not saying you have to agree with it or not. I'm just telling you what the rule is. When your arms are in your silhouette. And when they're outside like this or yeah. that or just up above your head in general, also, don't you bring, do get these consequences. And, and also, don't bring up Jose because... We didn't even agree he, with Jose. No, 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 don't, don't bring up Jose because, yes, he was right to be mad. But what he did and what the Roman fans did afterwards was not okay. No. So don't bring up Jose today. And right. no, one's, no, one's, no one's condoning. No one's condoning. No, 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 what what you're referee. saying is basically... All I'm saying is... is all I'm merely saying... One second. Don't accuse me of condoning anything. That's not what I'm doing. I'm merely pointing out the fact <laughs> that if we're, going to, if we're going to be consistent, the proximity rule, what is going on? Like, what's what's the difference? Because if you're jumping, are you supposed to jump like a salmon like this every time? Yeah, no, no, it's it's out, it's out. We, all, we all agree with you on that. But we talk. The rule here is the issue. The point is, I actually think Roma should have got a penalty. In mm-hmm. Europe, in Europe, they're even more strict than we are in the Premier League and under FA rules. That was the first handball like that I've not seen given. There was one that I don't remember who conceded it. I want to say it was. I want to say it was Bayern Munich. The one Bayern Munich got towards the end of the game against City in the Champions League was identical to the Roma one. Never a penalty, but it was given. So I agree. But the thing is, I understand why. Pep would be angry with that today, although he won't give a damn right now. And if you don't get them, they've got to change the law on it. It's got to be, did they deliberately handball it or not? They've got to go back to the, the old rules because they were better. On that. We had the one where, in, in the Europa League when, when Bruno slid tackle and his arm was on his body. It yeah, hit yeah. his arm. He got a yellow, got suspended from the next game, and then we lost 3-0. So yeah. this is why, Egal, I actually don't spend so much time talking about this refereeing decisions because we've benefited and it harmed us a lot this season. And, and was, I'm and not going to talk. And I didn't see a rival come on here and defend Bruno and get Iron exactly. on behalf. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, some super chats here. No, First one says, on uh, thanks for giving us Gunas a day out at Wembley in August. Um, after the collapse we had, I couldn't handle United winning two trophies plus top four. 
I understand that, Jason. Yeah. It's uh, it, it feels like a win for you guys. But remember, I do implore Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool to look beyond the bigger picture. This City team's about to eclipse anything your club's ever achieved. <laughs> like, it's not something to celebrate. It's, you're literally yes, a it is. Only t- this, this, is what I, this is what I love about all of this, right? I, as much as I don't want City doing it, because they match what Man United have done. I saw an article from Ian Ladyman that says, if City do the treble, it breaks the last barrier of Man United's dominance in England. I'm like, yo, we've got 67 trophies compared to City's 30, that they've got 31 after today. And they're, ga- they're gaining and they're catching and they're doing brilliantly. But I'm seeing like Man United attacks for City doing well. And I'm thinking, but they're leaving everybody else in their wake. They're seeing dust. At least we're still ahead of them in certain things. And I'm seeing like fans of clubs that they're overtaking in terms of total trophies. And they're about to do an achievement that only Man United have done in, in England. And they're celebrating it. I'm like, bruv, they're leaving you, but I don't get the celebrations. It's weird to me. Um, this here says, uh, as an Arsenal fan, I believe United played very well, good defensively. City had a, a game plan and dominated possession. United failed to put City on pressure. I, do you know what? The only thing I disagree on that, bro, is I think when we had that pressure late in the second half, we didn't take those chances. You know, Garnacho's shot curls in as an example that City might have gone up the other end and scored. Who knows what would have happened at those moments, but it's about taking City a chance. City could have gone 2-0 up before, before you even kicked the ball. That's... Well, that, that's yeah. true. They, they, they could have done. There's no there's no doubt about it. But that wasn't what the Super Chat said. The Super Chat said we failed to put on pressure. I think we did put pressure at the at times, but we didn't take the chances. And they could have gone two up. But then if you break down the game in terms of shots and opportunities that happen in, in matches, as an example, actually, the full stats are now in. We actually had 13 shots in the game to their 11 overall. They had those two shots, but then we had two opportunities after that to score. So it could have been 2-1 to us before we even scored our penalty if we play that game. You know what I mean? So you know, Rashford had that header that went narrowly wide. If he gets a better connection, it could be 1-1. Like, it's the same for everybody in that regard, I, I think, Gal person. Fair enough. Uh, so based on that, uh, should De Gea be sold? I'd loan him to Luton. <laughs> Keep him on the bench. Good bench player. Uh, the penalty was almost identical to what Luke Shaw conceded against Brighton away, is what Stephen... Um, oh, yeah, and everyone says on this show, I remember the comments say it was 100% the penalty. Uh, David De Gea against Brighton, now City in a final. Why? Because he ain't good enough anymore. It's as simple as that. Uh, Bruno had his typical smelly gig, big game performance. I, I, I didn't think Bruno was that bad today. I'm not saying he was a well beater, but I didn't think Bruno was that bad. Uh, personally, he created the, the most joint most amount of chances on the pitch, scored a goal from a penalty. You know, I thought he did all right, but that's your opinion. I appreciate it, bro. Uh, Igal has the football analysis of a 12 year old. It's not very nice. I don't think. I don't come think. On, it, I don't think I don't think he has. I think Igal says good things. The problem is, Igal. This is my opinion. No, no, I don't. I I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I I mean, and I don't disagree with you all the time. The problem is, I think you're so used to people disagreeing with you. Sometimes I like to ask questions to delve deeper, and you take it as why you're disagreeing with me, or I'm trying to open up your question for wider discussion. And instead of just listening for a moment, you kind of your trigger uh, 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 hair trigger um, reaction, just like. Slide down some good points. Uh, if City win the Champions League, what will Hamza do for us all? Uh, maybe he'll reveal that he was a Man United fan when he was a kid. Maybe he'll do one of those. Maybe he'll do one of them things. Uh, Jason Martin definitely was a United fan. There was no United. There was no City fan recording United games as a kid. Um, thank you for becoming a member, my guy. DJ Khaled, congratulations! You lost another one. Uh, thank you, uh, Matt Manny uh, Soto. I appreciate that, bro. He's um, coming after me every time. I don't know what I did to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, 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 I was just gonna say, is Ilka Gunuan the most clutch player in world football right now? That's my boy because the guy, the guy's produced, I hate him, the guy's, pro- the guy's <laughs> producing league titles. He's doing it, he, only team he's not doing it for is Germany, but like even them, he's their penalty taker. Like, really and truly, we got to talk about it. I'll have you know that for Germany, he played quite well in their penultimate game. So we'll be having less of that. I, I remember Don't that. Don't my boy, right? Ilkay yeah. Gundo. You know, Gundo less of that. Germany, Germany, was, Germany, was, Germany was poor. You but you know, where, 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 where do you see him then? If we look at like Premier League legends, forget about where he's in the world right now. We know he's, one he's of the best, best right ever German player to play in the Premier League. Okay. No, I'm ta- I want more than that. For me, that's still a weak statement, right? Where do you rank him? Like You've got Patrick Vieiras. You've got Steven Gerrard. You've got David Silvers. You've got... Paul Scholes is, Gerrard's, at least. where does he rank, in your opinion? Like, who would you put him above? Who do you think he's a better Premier League icon than? And you're right, his clutch moments that win trophies are so valuable. And there's only a handful of midfielders that have lots of them. 
Lampard does, Gerard does, Skulls has as examples, and there are others. Where do you rank him personally? Nostalgia will tell you Cesc Fabregas should be ahead of him, but I really do believe because of his league titles and because of his impact for City, you could put him in that category and you could put him ahead of Cesc. Whereas like, it's not the top, but it's like the bracket underneath. He's not in the top bracket because he's not the match winner every week. He's not the main guy for City. But to be a midfielder, a part of a team that's won so many titles and to be such an impact player, he's in that conversation just underneath where I would put Cesc Fabregas and some of those other players. Yeah. So I would say he's in that bracket. Okay, I want to go do a name game with you. Yes or no to above or not? Like yes, if he's above him, no. So if I was, you already said Cesc Fabregas. So if I was to say uh, David Silva, no. Patrick Vieira, no. Patrick Vieira is in the top category. Don't put him in this conversation. I'm just asking. Uh, Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes up there. He's not. He's not in this conversation. Roy Keane. Roy Keane, yes, he's in that conversation. He's we're, above Rakeen. Above, above Rakeen. No, he's in, he's in that bracket. Because I don't think... I, I'm not putting... I'm not disrespecting Roy Keane. But understand, Roy Keane was not the main guy in that midfield for... Uh, he, for was, he was. He was. I'm not... Uh, there was always there was other guys that did more. The, 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 the combo is in, is, are they in the same bracket. Is Gundogan better Maybe, maybe it's my bias because I always rated Vera, Vieira over Keane. Maybe it's my bias. Call is, it bias. Is Gundogan better than Roy Keane, yes or no? As a footballer, yes. Achievements wise, they're close. You can have an argument. Achievement, achievement wise, uh, uh, what's your name? Roy Keane, captain seven Premier League titles. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. And, and my man was part of what five Premier League titles? No, no, he yeah, said I captain. Was... Watch, watch the so, words he so, tell you. Uh, again, so, captain, so, uh, so, uh, can I ask you a question then? Again, I'm just trying to ask questions here. So, if Fernandino was there, you, you spoke earlier about clutch and winning trophies. If Roy Keane, who's been clutch, and Roy Keane, who's won more trophies than Gundogan, and, by the way, Patrick Vieira, why would you put Vieira above legacy. Keane, who has a better legacy in the Premier League? Keane has a better legacy because he's won so much. But when it comes, yeah. uh, but when it comes, to, when it comes to looking at players, you, you can dissect different parts of their game and look at different things. Yeah, so, so overall, o- to- overall, though, you're saying um, Gundogan and Patrick Vieira are better than Roy Keane. I don't know why Patrick Vieira is in this conversation, personally. I I'm just saying Roy Keane, Roy Keane. I don't look at him. I don't. I never. Maybe I just don't rate Roy Keane because of the whole Patrick Vieira thing. That's maybe fair. I'm, I'm just. I, I, I hear you on that. So look, I think Gundogan, by the way, is in, in in a conversation for you know top fifteen midfielders in Premier League history. There's a lot of midfielders that go into that conversation. Where do you put Roy Keane in that conversation, Terry? In the top five. He was in the top he was five. Astound, he was an astoundingly good football player. Um. My top Is Kevin five. Kevin ahead of Roy Keane for you. I, I, my top five. Last time I did it was Skulls, Keane, Lampard, KDB. I think I Vieira fifth. I think I Vieira fifth. So for me, if KDB pulls off this treble, he, he's on route to going maybe into that second place position because. Technically, as a footballer, he is better than Roy Keane, and, and I would admit that. But Roy Keane's always been up there for me because he's just a f- phenomenal, phenomenal football player, what he brought to the club. He was he was the main guy at Man United for like 12, 13 years. Like, the guy was ridiculous. Um, and the thing is, like, Maybe how old are you? How old are you? What year were you born? 91, bro. I'm 32. <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. young. So the first 10 years of Roy Keane's career, you didn't watch, and you haven't gone back and watched... 10 years worth of Roy Keane footage, have you? No. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, w- I would personally, if you didn't watch someone play, I, pr- I probably wouldn't give an opinion. And that's my view. Like, I, I, I leave out... Like, you whatever me. Like, No, no, yeah. But I, I, again, for me, if someone said to me, who is the better midfielder? Um, what's the name of the guy that used to run UEFA? Michel Platini. Somebody said P- Platini or KDB. I wouldn't do it because I never watched Platini play, who was amazing, by the way, because you can't judge people you haven't watched, in my view, but... Um, good, good, yeah. good opinions there. Uh, people saying Bruno, uh, remember he's play, uh, he's been playing on the wings to accommodate Ericsson and Vekos. Absolute joke. He's a cam. Uh, agree with you there, Dan. Great. Played point, on the wing because we didn't have a winger. Not yeah, to exactly. accommodate anyone. I think that, yeah, but it's who else you put out there? No, that's what I'm saying. Like he would have played in the middle if we had yeah. Anthony playing today. Yeah, so and this one has of those... nothing to. Yeah, Ericsson would have been out. I'm just trying to correct what he just said. There. Right. Okay. 
Uh, is Balak a joke to you? Is Mirza Ozil? So you put Gundogan above Balak and Ozil as well. That's to the super chat again. No shot. Yeah, no he's shot. achieved more. He's he's achieved more than Ozil. I love Ozil. Don't get me wrong. Uh, former Arsenal boy, but really and truly, he's achieved more than him based on the amount of Premier League he's won, the amount of titles he's won, and he's going to win potentially go and win the Champions League. So let's be real. Do you see what Igal has just done there? Igal has just is just taken the goat of Thierry Henry away. He's no, done it. That's not that's not the conversation. He's done it, people. We got him. It's about <laughs> no, because you said because he achieved more. So Listen, Ryan Giggs always achieved more than Henri, at... right? Sorry? Did they achieve more than Henri in the Premier League? Who? Giggs and Skulls. Repeat it again. I didn't hear who you said. Then Henri. No, but who did who Giggs and Skulls has achieved more than Henri again? I'm just okay. Playing. You see, I, I didn't catch that part. He said it so quickly. Oh. Uh, oh. When it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Henri, it's a different situation. We're talking about what he did, his impact, his transfer, the way that the way that people view the game. There's more there's, there's more factors into this. It's not just it's not just awards. But hey, for me, when I'm when I'm when people are so close, like that's what you separate them with. I hate Henri's my boy. I, I think you. the gap between Henri and these other guys is a little bit different. No cap. Uh, I heard that uh, Gundogan. <laughs> I heard that Gundogan is going to Barca. Listen, yeah, Arsenal got to try and get him as well. They you can't know. afford him. Anyone who didn't want him. Um, between 1975 and 83, Liverpool won 14 trophies, excluding Community Shields, which was six six league titles, three League Cups, three European Cups, one UEFA uh, UEFA Cup and a Super Cup. Best side to come out of the UK. Fact. Then you man have got to get on the airways when they're saying that City are about to surpass. United's team, instead of celebrating it, go on there and defend your team and say, why are we not even being mentioned, my G? Because you're being I, passed over by default. I have a question. So why don't we bring up the 30s for Arsenal? Come on. Let's be honest. Bruv, no, if I'm your 30s. I was like 12 years old, old mate. You get what I'm Wait, saying, you, right? You were 12 years old in the 30s? Yeah, I'm, in the I'm, 30s. I'm about 82, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you Where's get what I'm saying, right? saying, Is this the greatest pep system that is made? Oh, that's an interesting question. Because the way that I see this 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 city team, he, they can do the possession, but the fact that they could go long to Haaland as well, and you don't know what to do with them. Do you high press? Do you sit back? I I'm I'm, start, I'm looking at him like, yo, this might be the. You beat us with a long ball today, Nubbins, and that's yeah, not yeah, your the, game. The long that's not your game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nobbins personally beat us. Can Nobbins That's... actually? Can he? Can you formulate the sentences to answer that right now? Right now, shall Nubbins? we find out using my words? That's a <laughs> yeah. that's a fascinating question. By genuinely a, a fascinating question. I've never ha heard that question from KJ. Um, is the is because I've heard lots of people say is Pep's is this current City team better than other City teams, which I highly disagree with. I've never heard is anyone ask true? is this system better than Pep's previous systems. Because the this, this system to, is yeah. more diverse now, Benz. You yeah, can play I, I possession think, and you can play long Yeah, goal. exactly. I think I think you're probably right. Um, I think that in terms of individual teams, for me personally, the Centurions and the Formidables, i.e. Man City 17, 18, 18, 19, is better than the current City side. However, that's a really interesting point. Is this current system and the potential of this system better than what those sides were uh taking part in in those years i think probably you're right um i think that this city side from like march to now or whatever is probably up there with like the best city sides ever so if city are able to continue playing this system and able to do it for uh, across the course of an entire season because again let's not forget city were poor this season from a period of like december sorry november to january february so the season overall yeah. hasn't been actually that good um but as I say, the the when when the system was stumbled upon with the help of Rico Lewis, I think. I think it. I think, yeah. I is think it better than Barcelona? Yeah. No, no I, 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 I would never. I would never say that anything is better. Pep for me, Pep's Barcelona is the greatest side I've ever seen in the history of I, the the universe yeah. of destiny. But, but so Barca, that Barca yeah. team was so good that I hated watching them play because their games were so boring. The games were boring. Their football was beautiful, but it was so one-sided. It was like watching Anthony Joshua box a baby. That's honestly how I felt most of the games where they had all the ball, they had the chances, they didn't concede. They'd go two goals up and then the team wouldn't touch the ball for 60 minutes. 
it was that and often people confuse that comment with oh, you saying it's rubbish you don't know ball and i'm saying it's so good it was a non contest and i like like today's game there were some moments of contest so i think this i like i prefer this i prefer this city system because they do give teams opportunities they're not as dominant as that pep system at, at uh, barca but that's because Xavi and Iniesta are almost one offs and so is Lionel Messi so you can't you can't replicate that team because there aren't there are no two midfielders of the pair in the world as good as them to hold possession. And you don't have listen, Harlan's a freak, but you've got to remember Messi was like a combination of Jack Grealish you're dribbling, KDB passing, and Harlan's finishing all rolled into one motherfucker. <laughs> but <laughs> this is how- why, but this is why I think this Pep system is better than that the, the Barca one because this is diverse. I, I, I honestly believe you could change some things, some players around in this system. And get the same result in that Barca one. Take Messi out. Take Xavi in the Yester. You, you, the, the link up play, the plus in the tiki taki ain't happening because those players were that. This, good this team as well though. As well. What, what I like about the City team is, do you remember yeah. when Jose's team started to get the better of them, and then Bayern got the better of them because they worked out well we can play nice football, but they were bigger and stronger men. They started now. You look at the City team. They are they are units. There's so many big men in that team I as well. I was gonna say yeah. It's like that hybrid of kind of this play the tiki taka, but we need that athleticism and size and strength in the team as well. It's just it's just a brilliant team, and Pep's a brilliant manager. But this is why you recruit to a footballing ideology and not just to the whims of whatever manager you've got. And you especially don't keep employing managers who see football differently because you'll never create a squad as cohesive as this team is now. And yeah, I've got nothing but pre- listen. Then I know a lot of people keep talking about their charges. I keep seeing them in the comments today. If that, they get found guilty, we'll discuss it. But equally, the reason why I, I like taking it away from the charges is because my club spent as much as them in the last decade, but we've wasted it. Oh, so this yeah. notion that you can't do what City have done in terms of building a great squad, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, Spurs. Actually, I saw a stat today that shows they're one of the, the, the biggest income sports brands in the world now. We can all afford, if our owners pump in money, to spend like City have done. We could all afford to do it if our owners put the money in. It's just about investing wisely giving out the right salaries and, and going for, not going for broke, but, you know, because you don't want to risk your club going out of business, but invest. And Arsenal are now doing it. The money they're offering the Sackers, the money they're offering Saliba, the money they're offering Rice and the like to sign. Arsenal are moving into the big boy league. I'm saying monetary-wise for the first time in the, in the Premier League era because the amount of players that Wenger let go don't want to pay the wages or we're not going to buy that, eight, that 50 million pound player. We'll buy this 13 million pound player from France and make him world-class. It, it, you've got to get the balance right. You really, really do. Uh, there's some more super chats. Here. It's a great question, KJ. Uh, it says, Igal, stop simping for IG. He ain't coming. Um, he ain't, I thought you meant uh, Instagram for a second. Uh, he ain't coming uh, to that small club like Arsenal. Arsenal is the most humiliated and embarrassed in the Premier League. Uh, gave a guard of honour to RVP. That's actually a class to give a guard of honour to an opponent. Anyways, it is what it is. <laughs> that was a weak he's comeback. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> no, no, but it, it's not, it's not a comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the honest truth. No, no, no. no. He goes a man of integrity. That's what he is. It is. Uh, is John Stones now a CDM? Yes. Brilliant, isn't he? He is what John Stones wants to be in it. No, yeah. John, John Stones, Stones is... is a vibe, man. Just what he wants. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah, you're a vibe right vibe. now. And he's on a vibe. <laughs> and he's on a vibe. Do you know what's crazy about John? I remember I did a video when he signed for City and I said he could go down as one of the greatest centre-backs and, and, and footballers ever in the Premier League, in Premier League history. Greatest, and he's on the road to doing it. But this guy is just out of this it's world. Boy. And how old is he? Is he only like, he's still only like mid-20s, right? He's 18, 18 years no, old. He's he's 29 now. He's actually he's older. He's 29 now. Fair enough. Oh. Okay, this this Pep system is going to make more people buy centre-backs and play them as full-backs. That's what it's going to honestly do. Yes, bring me Timber for right back at United. But they ain't Bro, now, but we already got, we already played Ben White there majority of the season, and we played Tommy Osu there one time. So we had a game one time where, this season where we had four and a halves. But that's probably going to be the way forward. Did you guys see the interview? Did you see the interview he had where he spoke about how having Cancelo and Zinchenko was one of the main reasons why they weren't able to compete? Yes, a, he ain't talked about the, the duels, best. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, this, I really this do is the... what he's going to do. Do you guys remember when we spoke many times on the terrace about how marauding attacking fullbacks were all in vogue right now, but that's going to change? And then let's see. And that's suddenly why AWB is looking like a better player again. Because if you noticed how football Twitter, which should never be the barometer for football knowledge, 
are no longer obsessed with marauding attacking fullbacks. No one cares anymore. Now it's all about, do you have fullbacks that can defend well? Do you have fullbacks that can operate in central areas? And this is what happens in football. There are always cycles. Nobody's obsessed with number 10s anymore. They were years back. Three years ago, no one wanted number nines. Now everyone wants a number nine. It's just football. And the only reason I, I say it like this is because... What's nine that is? Football, well, they used they don't know they want number nine. Everyone wants number nines now. Number nines are fashionable again. Everyone wants yeah, one. Harland, Osimhen, Kane. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it is what it is. But this is football goes in cycles. And in four or five years' time, be different profile of players that are wanted. It's like music. You, know, you listen to a, a great band from the 80s, like Journey. We've all heard some of their songs and the way the men in those bands sung. No one sings like that anymore. It's because record labels don't look for men that sing like that anymore. There are still people that sing like that, but their voices are just not wanted anymore and that's the same with footballers you go through cycles where certain profiles and abilities become more fashionable than others and uh, it's, it's it's a good thing uh, a backup goalkeeper had better feet than David De Gea what a joke it's not hard to be fair uh, Chombe uh, says Liverpool beat them to the title so United Arsenal Charles I think he means Chelsea and Liverpool can catch them uh, they are an excellent team but beatable yeah, listen I think City can be caught with the right listen the average points total to win the, to win the league in the last three years it's been 89 points. They're a very good team. But if our clubs all invest and keep growing, they can compete. It's about spending money correctly. That's it's what it comes down no, to. But City need to get a transfer window wrong for us to catch up. City needs a transition season for sure. I agree with that. Maybe yeah. Pep Guardiola leaves. Um, no. I wish he had, I wish he had a <laughs> passport, to be honest with you. Then, then he'd be gone. Do you know what I mean? That's what I wish. Uh, only I'm way viewing to next season as a big opportunity because of Gundogan who's their club captain, Bernardo Silva, Laporte, Don't worry, all they're both leaving. Could be a both potential opportunity staying. for life, somebody to, time, to, to capitalize. Life, time, I can't wait contract. for those two to leave. I yeah, honestly can't don't... wait for those right. two to well, leave. You're going to be waiting 50 years. Well, years. They aren't going yeah. anywhere. He is. He's if Bernardo wait, Silva leaves. Yeah. Where do you want your statue, El Kai Gondor? <laughs> Oi, I'm wearing a NASA t-shirt because I'm out trying to find uh, Nobbins' mind. <laughs> <out in the laughs> <moon, bro. laughs> Nobbins, you're saying he's staying. Yeah, that's my boy. He wouldn't let me down. Who's you realize, Bernardo? Gal, you, you, Gal, you do realize Nobbins is very drunk right now. Like, yeah, don't worry about it. I, I, would, I wouldn't take it too seriously. You can't win with logic. I've had a lot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, only way to compete with City is if we uh, get acquired by Qatar. Imagine if this City team gets Kimmich to refresh. Yeah, if they get Kimmich to refresh this midfield, ah, it'll be a madness. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be a madness. Uh, listen, I want to say a little bit of a, a thank you to all of the viewers. We have got one more match reaction to go this season. Of course, next Saturday, the Champions League final. That, that um, actually, actually, I'm also going to react to the West Ham game. I think I might do a little one for them. Uh, is there an English side? Um, and of course, uh, the Champions League final next week, which could be historic in so many ways. Thank you to my panel for coming on tonight. Uh, congratulations again to Nobbins, the City fan of course, Man City. It pains me to say well done, but congratulations mm. to you, my viewers, my members, my super chatters, and everyone who's hit the like button. A big thank you to each and every single one of you. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very, very soon.